topics I'm going to touch on today is um, just giving you guys a general update of what's been going on here at Trans Am. Um, valuable information for newbies coming into the game or if you're looking to get your CDL, what you should do and all that stuff. You know, I'm trying to make my my um my videos as less like dramatic or is if you know anything about Transam or you've done any research on Transam or you're a Transam driver, you know that there is like a lot of negative stuff that goes around about this company in terms of the way all oh, everything everything is uh, handled here from pay to all that stuff you know what I mean so but at the end of the day I'm just basically letting you guys know what's going on the experience what it's been like for me now I've, let me put it this way as far as pay goes it's not the best paying trucking company and I guess there's other companies out there that pay worse than what Trans Am pays. I've heard of a company that pays like 29 cents a mile. You know what I mean? Trans Am is 32. There's no detention pay with Trans Am. There is layover pay. Um, I don't know for everybody if they've, like any other Trans Am driver here watching this, if you guys ever um, had to deal with the layover pay or if you guys actually get it i got mine i got mine but it took me a whole month later before i got it now my driver manager approved on it which i spoke to her and she told oh you're gonna get it on your pay um which i believe she did uh but when i called payroll payroll was basically saying my driver manager's manager the fleet manager needs to sign off on it and i guess you know he's busy or he just didn't pay attention to it or whatever the case was but it took them a whole month before they actually paid me now before i went on home time when i went on home time actually i had another layover um and then i was supposed to get it on my last check and it didn't come on my last check i wasn't surprised my driver manager told me she was gonna pay and then i had a breakdown also when I was ready to come back out, the day I was supposed to return to work, my truck broke down. Uh, my dad, uh, um, the DF sensor needed to be replaced and the the cooling sensor needed to be replaced. And that took a total, it happened like at 12 or two o'clock in the afternoon. They came and got the truck by four and then I got the I got the truck back um, I think it took a day they had it for a full day and then I got it the next day so I was supposed to get some breakdown pay they still haven't said anything about that I was watching the, another video with another guy and he was basically saying like some people don't know what breakdown pay is layover pay all that stuff and basically um, some companies like if you don't ask your DM they not they basically not gonna give it to you you know what i mean now my dm is aware of all that and she told me i was gonna get it um i seen where they sent me the layover pay because they sent me a message on my garmin saying you know da, 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 but not for the breakdown pay so i'm just gonna wait until i get paid to see if it's paid if it's not then i talk to them about it um the next thing uh what it's been like okay last week i ran i came back out late so i started like saturday and the pay period begins friday um begins on friday long story short i was only able to run like 2300 miles for the week so when i ran that 2300 miles and i finished that pay period that by the friday morning I was already on a trip, so I ran as much miles as I possibly could on Thursday, going up, leading up to 12 o'clock, because it cuts off at 12. So whatever you run before Thursday, 12 o'clock, you're going to get it on that following paycheck, because they have a week in the back for you, all that stuff. Um, 
So I begin on Friday. I had uh, I had like 400 miles left to complete the run that I was on. So basically, and I was going 400 miles I can drive in a day. So basically, um, I started out with uh, on Friday. I started with like 400 miles in a new pay period, which is a good thing. So by the time I got that dropped off and all that, I'm looking at it like, okay, I'm aiming for 3,000 miles this week. I already have 400 miles. Um, they put me on a couple more runs. Put me on like an 800 mile run, I think. Um, when I finished that one, I was on, I think I was, I'm basically sitting on like 1,800 miles by the end of Sunday night, I believe. Then they gave me this relay. And that's the thing, bro. Like with the company side, I've heard them say it before the company drivers mostly do relays they didn't have me doing relays before because i ran hard and um my uh mentor always say well they like you they see how the way you run so they basically giving you like least miles because i was making like running like 2800 miles close to 3000 miles some weeks um company drivers i guess other company drivers they don't do that they have them at like 1800 miles 2000 miles whatever the case is you know what i mean it was different for me now i was going to do lease but when i so much things been going on but um i was going to do lease basically and when i uh when i went down to florida to get my uh to finish that home load i was on they messed up. They gave me like six different POs. None of the POs work. The load was supposed to be delivered Thursday. I got the load 10 hours late um, from the shipper because something broke or whatever the case was. Um, I got it like 10 hours late. It was supposed to be delivered Thursday originally at um, 3.30 in the afternoon. They changed that to 11.30 at night. Then they changed it again to Friday, um, Friday, Friday, I think in the morning, in the afternoon, Friday in the afternoon. So I got there Thursday. I was there from early because like I said, when I drive, I drive. So I was there from early. I was there from Thursday, basically. I had to sit until Friday, 7.30 in the afternoon. Um, I, they, it was a Walmart load, so you know anything about walmart you can't go there too early you can go they only give you an hour window to get there before so i was there like 6 30 because i was literally parked right there looking at it so i go in turns out after i sat for a whole day turns out none of the po's work so i'm trying to get back and forth in contact with trans am trying to get it figured out dealing with night dispatch that's oof um Dealing with night dispatch, trying to get it figured out. It just wasn't working out. They told me, okay, they're going to give me an update. Um, I should sit tight. I tried calling the broker. I tried doing everything I possibly could to get. Because I knew if I was just to leave it to Trans Am, I would be sitting there for, for however long. Saturday morning, they... Saturday morning, I did. I, st I woke up, still didn't get a message. So I texted them like, yo, I've been sitting here waiting for you guys like to figure stuff out for me. And uh, basically, nobody has gotten back to me. No, my DM responds, because my DM is there in the morning. She responds saying, oh my God, this is news to me. I knew nothing about this. So basically, the drive the dispatch at night said oh you know sit that we're gonna get to the end of this um for you gonna get this stuff figured out um and just sit tight i'm gonna send you a message i'm there waiting for hours and hours and hours and bear in mind this is my home load so and i've been out there for like two and a half months so i'm ready to go you know what i mean so i'm basically just sitting there waiting um she responds saying oh she didn't know anything about it nobody told her anything and then she starts reading back the messages that i sent and all that stuff and then 
she basically sent me the same numbers bro the same numbers that they've been sending me over and over oh i got to the end of it i initially just told the lady inside to make me a new appointment make because she told me at one point in time one of the numbers picked something up they said the number was used by another driver yesterday to deliver a different load so i'm like how oh, is that even possible um they said it's whatever so they made me a new date no that new date was on saturday i had to wait until in the night on saturday it was they gave me a 5 30 appointment like i said i can be there hour before so i was there 4 29 because i'm ready to get rid of this thing so go in when i uh went to open the doors one of the pallets tilted over and i couldn't open both the doors so i'm like damn this this is just trying me right now because i um, already been waiting for sitting with this load for two days i'm supposed to be home i bumped the dock around five o'clock and uh, because of the pilot situation i had to open one side they had to fix it then i had to pull forward open the other side all that stuff um i never got unloaded until like 10 in the night saturday night at 10. now when i put my empty in what trans am did they sent me another load that was going support that was supposed to be picked up on sunday with a drop dead time of pick drop dead pickup time on monday so i'm like nah that ain't happening because one this is my home load they have in a system that i was supposed to be back at work on sunday but i had this load on from this load was supposed to be delivered from thursday i never got it done until delivered until saturday night at 10. so they want me to basically basically i've been out there for two and a half months because of all this delay i uh they want me now to come back at work so basically i wouldn't get any home time so i was like nah they go have to either give me a service failure or i don't care what they want to do because i'm going home you know what i mean um i need my stuff it's getting cold in other states i haven't been home recruit driver recruiter or whatever told us take only a week worth of clothing i don't know why they would even tell you that i just don't get that if you're coming out here for orientation and all that stuff bro come prepare dude especially now it's going like in the winter time be bring your jackets um bring your jackets your gloves your sweaters because temperature is going on bro. the other day in um what was it i think it was wyoming um i don't remember what state it was it was just snowing it was just snowing in kansas in missouri last night it was it is a snow hard just like some fluffies or whatever they want to call it but it wasn't snowing hard but fact of what i'm trying to say is be prepared be geared up because it's going the temperature is going down in these states you know what i mean um so i was out there basically i had a week worth of clothes and that was that was what i left home with when i um came on orientation and in between i bought a little bit of stuff here and there but i didn't really have everything that i needed like i, I didn't have my phone all that stuff you know what i mean so come prepared basically um back to the 3000 miles so i had a layover there and all that stuff i finally made it home um on home time i had a breakdown they had to get my trailer towed my truck towed all that stuff um back to the 3000 miles now when i i was sitting on like 1800 miles basically they gave me a load that picked up it was the pickup time was like this morning at eight and it was a uh, 144 miles empty you know what i mean so i'm sitting at the truck stop yesterday because i did a relay um so i'm sitting at the truck stop and uh as soon as my uh, clock reset i budgeted out i was okay i'm gonna drive for three hours go to the shippers overnight parking i'm gonna sit right there 
um, take my 10 again, and then my clock's gonna reset probably like at three in the morning. Um, chances are I'll get that load before eight o'clock. If I don't get it before eight o'clock, it still will be fine as long as I get it by eight. I'm budgeting in a time to try to make 3,000 miles. The time they gave me for it to be delivered, the way I calculated my time, I was gonna be there early. So I have a better chance of getting unloaded early. So they can give me another load get me moving as long as i'm finished that load and i get moving on thursday i'll be able to drive some more miles so it put me closer to it'll put me closer to the 3000 mile mark to where i'm trying to get to now they gave me this load it was 800 miles going to uh pa and i was looking at like yeah this going it's basically gonna work out for me. Then I started driving like two and a half, two hours. They voided the load and gave me a relay, set me up back with a relay. So I'm like, damn, bro, these people, it's like the way I see it's almost like they don't want you to, they don't want, they don't want you to make a certain amount of miles. You're already not getting the best pay. You know what I mean? So it's like, they're trying to keep you down. They tell you when you're doing orientation that Oh, we don't force you to do lease. We don't force lease down anybody. They don't tell you. They don't force you by telling you, hey, you have to do lease. You see what I mean? What they do, they do it with the miles, bro, and the way they, they treat you. It's going to force you. Basically, you're going to see that you're not really making any money. So what's the other option? You're going to go do lease. And then the lease program here in Trans Am, bro, that it doesn't make you make you can make a little bit more lease driver is running good bro are making uh, from the ones i know they're making like they're averaging like seven eight hundred bucks nine hundred bucks a week you know what i mean and they're doing there yeah, they're making two three hundred more than company drivers but bro y'all y'all ain't paying no taxes yet you feel me at least the company guys taxes are already paid they ain't got to think about paying the taxes again you know what i mean these guys are and yeah it can be a lot of deductions so they don't pay a lot of taxes but still bro for, for leasing a truck and you barely making a thousand bucks consistently that don't make no sense i mean i'm not even knocking it because i consider doing lease here bro but it just in my opinion, I'm a beginner. I just started. Okay. I know for a fact I wasn't going to make a whole ton of money right off the beginning or some drivers watching this and say, oh, yeah, I'm making X, Y, Z. I get that, bro. Like, until I get there, you know what I mean? I know I got to get a little experience and all, but, like, you can do. I feel like there's companies out there. You can go work as a company driver and make that that kind of money. You know what I mean? If you're going to be do leasing, bro, I feel like you should at least be seeing, lease you should be seeing for a week, bro, like 1400 1500 a week. That's the way I feel. 1300 at that at least, the bare minimum you should be making as a lease driver. You know what I mean? Now, not every lease driver here makes that kind of money. Not everyone that's is going to make 1300 um. 800 or 900 but for the ones i know that's where they're like averaging um maybe other drivers make a thousand bucks or it based on it's based on how you run how you manage your clock how much you go home but on the other hand you're making 900 bucks bro and a thousand bucks and 1200 bucks you still got to think about the maintenance of the truck insurance all that stuff all that you know what i mean I just don't see it making much sense. The lease program here. That's the way I feel. If any lease driver is watching this, comment down below and let me know if I'm right or I'm wrong. You know, there's a reason why these guys leave these trucks in whatever state and they just don't give a shit and they just don't pick it up. You have trends and have to send somebody to go pick it up or the truck is repoed or, you know, when I just started, when I finished the backing range at Trans Am, before I got my own truck, they said they bought, they booked me a ticket and sent me out to New York. 
to go get a truck that was repoed from a lease driver. The truck only had like 9,000 miles on there. Beer, and it was a brand new truck. It was a 2020 truck. You know what I mean? So the guy's stuff was inside. Everything was still in, basically still inside. They repoed the truck because, you know what I mean? So the lease program here, in my opinion, is not it's not but they steer you they do th things like these to steer you um towards the lease they basically gave me another relay no i had a four o'clock yesterday i was going to drive for the three four hours get to the shipper shut down um so i could basically if you gave me a load i could basically drive for that day you know what i mean um so they put me on a relay now that relay picks up today at two o'clock 1400 now i should have paid more to take more attention because when they sent me that and i seen 1400 i know 1400 is two o'clock but i wasn't paying attention not realizing it's 1400 um it's two o'clock in the afternoon today so i will i set my alarm which is where my clock basically reset um set my alarm for two like i set it for 245 because i'm like okay they may they might need some time to get here 2.45, I wake up, um, still no message on so I, like, I text him, like, what's the ETA on this driver? Then they text me back 10 minutes later saying he's going to be here tomorrow in the afternoon. No, I texted them Tuesday. I don't even know why they tell me tomorrow. They didn't say later this afternoon, but it says the 29th in the load information, and today's the 29th, so maybe they're just referring to it like they think it's just still night or whatever. Um, so until late in the afternoon meaning late sometime this evening you know what i mean and then that's a relay bro like it just messed up my whole my whole um me trying to hit three thousand miles because how that messes it up i sat for basically the entire day yesterday and i'm ba i guarantee you i'm not gonna get this load until like five o'clock you know what i mean or like they're about basically so i sat for the whole day yesterday and i'm basically sitting almost all of today that's a day and a half that you already sat not moving if your wheels aren't is this is not an hourly job this is a cents per mile job you get paid by the mile so if your truck is not moving you're not earning you know what i mean so when they did that they just messed basically everything up you know it's um let me tell you the goods i see with this company it's not a micromanaged company like they clamp down on you for this or this or this they don't really do that here they don't really mess with you like that you know what i mean um there's been days where they just send me my load i send my load commitment pick the load up deliver the load i ain't got to deal with them i like it like that you know what i mean they don't talk to me i don't talk to them i like that i don't like to be bothered i don't like nobody calling me or you know what i mean unless you know i like that there's so there's been there's not you don't really have to deal with them that's the one of the things that i think that's good um here what else is good about this company well they ain't, they ain't even know much good to say i'm not gonna say it's bad or whatever the case is but the disadvantages with this place is certainly there i'm grateful for um the fact that they gave me my first trucking job you know what i mean they gave me my start it's obvious i'm obviously not gonna forget that you know what i mean this is where i started this is how i started this is the company that i started with so I'm not here to really bad mount the company, but I'm basically letting you guys know what's going on, you know. So I don't want to make this video much like longer, so I'm just gonna cut it here. Um, don't forget to uh, click the like button. You know, it sends a message to YouTube and all that stuff. Um, come like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, send me a message if you have got questions drop drop them in the comments down below you know and just uh, be safe out there